So welcome to another class of mine in which in continuation with full employment equilibrium and the disequilibrium points. We finish with deficient demand and we are going to do excess demand. So what is excess demand? It is when aggregate demand is greater than aggregate supply at full employment equilibrium. So sometimes it's also known as the inflationary gap. That is full employment equilibrium and say over full employment equilibrium. The difference between the two, it's, it's a matter of rising prices and that's why it is known as inflationary gap. Now look at this. So here we see that in the figure, we can see it uh, depicts excess demand. How? x-axis measures the level of income and output, y measures the aggregate demand, c plus i, as is the aggregate supply curve. Now ADF and AD1 denote aggregate demand curves, ADF is aggregate demand full employment and AD1 is current aggregate demand and the desired level of aggregate demand for full employment is indicated by aggregate demand at full employment. ADF. So corresponding to this level, equilibrium is struck at the point E where AD is equal to AS and the current level of AD is indicated by AD1 which depicts excess demand in the economy. Thus excess demand is, is equal to AD, excess demand is what? AD1 minus ADF that is AE that is known as excess demand. So the difference between these two levels of aggregate demand is AE which is a measure of inflationary gap or excess demand. So what are the causes of excess demand? So we take the first two very important C plus I. So what happens to consumption? There is an increase in consumption expenditure due to increase in propensity to consume and because of that and there is lesser uh, propensity to save. And why is that? There is a lot of increase in investment because due to high business expectations. So these two causes are responsible for a situation of excess demand in a two sector economy. However, in an open economy, there are some other additional factors which may cause a situation of excess demand in the economy. And they include increase in government expenditure, there will be an increase in government expenditure, then what else? For development as well as welfare purposes in the economy this may result in excess demand and rise in exports excess demand may also arise when demand for exports increases due to relatively low prices of domestic goods or due to fall in the exchange rate of for domestic currency then you have cuts cut in taxes cut in taxes by the government may lead to increase in disposable income with the people and hence increase in consumption demand so all of that and then we have what is known as effects of excess demand what happens the effect on output is in situation of excess demand output of goods and services remain constant excess demand only puts excess pressure on existing supply effects on employment since the economy is already operating at full employment level there is no possibility of increase in employment due to increase in demand and what about increase in prices? High increase in prices because the supply is fixed. So the economy being already working at full employment level, there is no possibility of increase in output in case of excess demand. Hence, aggregate demand falls short of aggregate. Aggregate supply falls short of aggregate demand. And uh, then that's how prices of goods and services start rising. So basically it is that, uh, as you see, that it is a, play, a case of inflationary situation and just a quick look at uh, we can just say a comparison between say excess demand and deficient demand if you take the meaning at full employment excess demand means aggregate demand is more than aggregate supply and deficient demand it will mean at full employment aggregate demand is less than aggregate supply what about the impact on prices and excess demand it leads to inflation that is it leads to a rise in general price level and deficient demand it leads to deflation 
that is it results in fall in general price level that means it's deficient demand in the economy regarding equilibrium here excess demand it is an overfull uh, employment equilibrium and in deficient demand it is an underemployment equilibrium uh, what about the basis impact on output and employment well in excess demand it does not affect the output and employment as economy is already operating at full employment level but in deficient demand it leads to fall in output and employment due to shortage of aggregate demand so this is what we have done and in the next class we are going to do the remedial measures how to overcome this inflationary uh, inflation and deflation so we are going to do that in the next class